Welcome, everyone. I'm very excited to have you here today. I hope you've had a nice day so far. Um, I'm going to make a relatively short, well, not so short, but kind of short kind of overview of the school and in particular um, architecture programs, uh, and then invite the faculty up front to answer more broadly questions that um, you may have. So a few words. Um, about the school, I think that uh, you know every school. Uh, a lot of the uh, questions are, you know, how are you different, and what makes you unique, and and I think a lot of the schools are unique as a result both of their history, but also you know where they're going now in this moment. And so ways that I like to think about. GSAP in terms of its history is, is in terms of density and diversity. Uh, we are uh, in a you know, neoclassical campus, but at the same time, you know, we're in part of New York City, one of the most global cities in, in, in the world. And I think that proximity to this very intense urban context has kind of generated a certain culture here where it's very hard to leave the city and its diversity at, at bay. And so I think we really embody what Cool has once uh, called in describing Manhattan, you know, this kind of uh, social condenser. Uh, and so I like to think about the school as a sort of uh, an urban condenser of ideas that sort of become embodied in architectural form and in other discourses and ways of kind of thinking about the world uh, through, through architecture. And I think that we really foster a culture of, of debate uh, not, you know, just uh, thinking about uh, asking students to discover for themselves what they believe architecture is and it can be in the world and what it can do um, today. And the second sort of point is really uh, this notion of continuity and change. Uh, we sort of are very aware of our own history. We are, you know, the architecture program is one of the first program of its kind in the country that really brought together a sort of Beaux-Arts tradition with very much more professional, pragmatic uh, kind of American culture. Um, we, you know, are sitting underneath the Avery Library, one of the most important and largest architecture libraries in the world. So the sense of the weight of history is quite present. But at the same time, I think we've led uh, uh, and often, or at least continue to try to lead uh, the change of the discipline, expanding them, questioning them, probing them to be able to engage uh, this time we are in uh, more actively. And so, you know, this is what we may have looked like uh, in, in 1883. And, and uh, thankfully, we look very different now, not only because of uh, technology and, you know, the fact that a lot of this sort of digital uh, sort of culture started at the school, but also, again, because of, our think, our student body, our embrace of diverse perspectives and backgrounds and in the sense that, you know, you come together and you share perspectives and you learn from, from one another. And so uh, some of these questions today that I think we're bringing uh, to the school and with a sense of urgency is, of course, the question of climate change and how it's impacting the built environment and how, as architects and experts of the built environment, we have to think about uh, not only climate change literally, physically, but also climate change as a sort of discourse, as a, as a way to recast how we understand ourselves uh, on the planet at this time. Uh, and so that is impacting everything from the material scale and the smallest uh, scale of what students are making here to uh, the kind of investigations that uh, students are, are, are making to of tracking and registering changes um, around the world. Um, questions of housing, uh, I think, um, you know, we have a long legacy of, of thinking about housing. The housing studio is really at the core of the MARC program, for example. Uh, and so this question of, of the intersection, you know, housing at really at this intersection of architecture and the city uh, is really both a design problem, but also, of course, a problem of social equity, a problem of, of construction. And we have um, 
here experts, you know, this is a, a project by an architect, one of the first modular uh, sort of housing projects in, in, in New York. Um, the question of visualization and critically engaging um, data and, and questions of representation is also very core um, to the school and kind of cuts across all of, all of the programs and, uh, and sort of uh, is producing uh, a sort of a new way to engage um, data uh, in in design and and sort of to think about it sort of virtually but also its impact on on kind of material culture and the connection between the analog and the digital and so i would say that the question of materiality uh, here also is very critical, but it's really connected to questions of energy. You can, you know, think about uh, a brick as a, as a material in a kind of Louis Kahn way, you know, of like the brick, what does the brick want? Or you can think about who made the brick, how long did it travel, what resources it took to extract it, etc. And so connecting that sort of, you know, micro scale to large scales and territorial understanding is really at the core of, I think, how we try to engage architecture here at the school. And this is a drawing by a former um, student of, of ours kind of trying to trace the story uh, of that brick um, um, today, a project by David Benjamin who created bricks out of mushrooms and to think about biodegradability and you know to really think about sustainability in, in new ways, in creative ways and in ways that impact design. And really, again, to think about architecture, not in terms of what it's been, but what it could be, how it can bring together the specific, and, you know, the, the kind of diversity of, 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 of cultures, of, of backgrounds, of, of context, um, uh, uh, together with a sense of the universal and what we are all seeking, whether it's, you know, becoming animals or, you know, finding and producing new subjectivities. And so the, the questions are always up. Uh, in the air, and it is questions that we really invite our students to engage with. So how do we think about the sense of continuity and the sense of change, and how does it impact um, the curriculum across uh, all, of the, all of the architecture programs in particular, but also across all of the programs uh, in general? I think this often comes up uh, from students, you know, what, you, know, what, you know, what is special about your curriculum? And so I wanted to take you through some of the kind of highlights. I think from, from you know, if, if you go through the MARC program, for example, from the first exercises you do in core one, there's a sense of questioning what is the ground of, of architecture today, what are the foundations, is it, is it water, is it air, we start with questions of environment, uh, and it kind of transpires to the kinds of drawings and representations and projects that, that students make uh, to think about, you know, zoom out and think very, very largely about the foundations foundations of architecture today. Um, and slowly we kind of bring in the section and, 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 and kind of inhabitation and structure with core two, thinking about buildings and institutional buildings and, and, and you know, we have the opportunity to engage with some of the great well, I don't know about great, but institutional buildings around the city, and we're in New York, so students are constantly visiting um, projects here and engaging uh, with with kind of architecture in the, in the city, and then and then housing uh, is, as I said, very fundamental um, to the core uh, curriculum here, and we think about housing not just in New York, but housing as a way to think uh, across contexts and cities, and 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 often travel across the Americas to to you know what is density here relative to density in Mexico City and how can we rethink the de appropriate living kind of environment here when we compare it to other places. And, and so students bring back that knowledge and sort of think about housing here in the city in relation to, uh, to housing in other ways, thinking about exteriority, the relationship between the individual and the collective, but also interiority and the everyday experience, uh, thinking also about envelope and the kind of negotiation between inside and, and outside and connecting to the text sequence in particular. And then zooming out, you know, from the housing scale 
scale, which is really that intersection, to thinking about scales of environment, which actually was conceived, you know, in relation to the urban design program, to think about the micro and the, and the macro, and, and bring questions of systems and infrastructure to bear upon uh, architectural thinking. So buildings are never thought of as a kind of autonomous objects, but rather perforated with the life within and the connection to the, to the surrounding. And you get to the third uh, year, the advanced studios, um, which are led by Juan Herreros and AAD by uh, Enrique Walker. And it's, Juan has been doing these kind of diagrams of like what are the words that are emerging out of 18, you know, 18 studios. And here you really encounter the sense of diversity of perspectives. And by the time you get there, you have a sense of what things you want to really explore further. And it's just the lottery is an incredible way to almost curate you know, your own choices. And so this is just like across three years. You know, some of the words that, you know, three years ago were kind of percolating from the studios and then last year there was a lot of anxiety around economy for some reason. I don't know. We still are doing well. I don't know how and or why, rather. Um, and, of course, typologies and programs and uh, but also uh, different places and cities and uh, I think the, the school's kind of global engagement is really uh, um, has a kind of long history with students. Studio X and the Kinney Travel Fellowship, and uh, that continues. And I don't know if you've been following Instagram or you know some of the images that are out in the level 200. So from iconic uh, buildings to environments to uh, uh, sort of uh, kind of thinking through uh, ar architecture in the world, very literally, and looking like. Uh, you know, you always stand out as architects. You know, it's never. It's very. You know. And, and, you know, all this thinking comes back uh, to kind of inform, uh, you know, projects that are very much engaged with questions of the, around the city, um, but also around the planet, uh, and uh, that think about, you know, new forms of living, new forms of uh, working, and kind of, uh, you know, the questions that are really uh, sort of important, and, and today questions of water, uh, you know, and how they, it makes it through into buildings and reinventing buildings as a result of that environmental thinking, or questions of institutions and representation, uh, and, and how those institutions, including Colombia, this was a project looking back at 1968, um, and the famous gym that was proposed and its consequence on, on Harlem. And so, you know, again, that history of the school, which is so tied in good and bad ways to its surroundings. And kind of, um, Sort of informing uh, uh, the the kind of advanced studios is uh, the notion of transfer dialogues. We always bring uh, Juan designed this sense of trying to bring discourse and design together and inviting practices, emerging practices, young practices, fresh, almost fresh out of school to think about and describe what they've been doing, you know, in their various uh, practices around the world and often bringing also back alumni to, to, to speak about their experience a few years out of, out, of, uh, out of school. And this was the result of a great uh, one-day symposia on the question of constructing practice in an engaged way today, um, um, which is a podcast which, uh, which you can uh, listen to. And that, you know, is brought back to the sense that, you know, this is not very top-down. This is also like in terms of uh, the, the sort of learning and, and, and engaging architectures, the, the ideas that you share amongst yourself. And so there's a lot of uh, fostering of criti criticism between you and, and co collegiality and collaboration and, and the transfer dialogue. This is the one-on-one -on -one series which students love where they kind of critique uh, another, one another very, very fast. And for the EAD, um, you know, studio and, and program, that transfer dialogue is really revolves around the argument series, which happens in the summer, which sets the foundation and the tone for often the kinds of questions that students sort of develop throughout their three semesters here. And that questioning carries through the history sequence, which is now called questions in architecture history, which both 
you know, looks at the canon but, but also expands it. A lot of that expansion has had to do with collecting uh, sort of references and precedents from around the world and really literally expanding the, the, the kind of projects that, that students learn about here uh, at school. It's the sequences led by uh, Reinhold Martin, which you'll hear uh, from. And the visual studies uh, uh, sequence is, is, is very strong as well. And I think this is uh, an alumni, uh, Lindsay Wilkstrom, who came back to talk about some of her work. And we're starting actually to find intersections between visual studies and technology. This was a kind of symp symposium called VisTech, a collaboration between Laura Kurgan and Craig Schwitters, which kind of looked at this new um, sort of uh, intersection between, between uh, visual studies and technology and how architects are finding new territory to practice uh, critically and in an engaged way, uh, bringing data and design and visualization and technology um, together. And if a lot of you often ask, you know, what can I do to prepare? You know, we have open source <laughs> uh, this uh, uh, skill tree uh, where you can learn different software and programs. I'm not saying that that's what you should do this summer, but if you're so inclined to explore a little bit, you can certainly look at our skill tree, which is out in the world for students to just learn different kinds of software. We've just expanded the makerspace. I hope some of you have visited it. Um, and I think for us, we really believe that we are part of this network here at the city of kind of fabrication shops and maker spaces and thinking about making in a, in a new way, not so much only about fabrication and robots, and, um, but rather about creativity and imagination and again, bringing these questions of materiality and embodied energy and sort of playfulness to hybridizing, you know, the analog and the digital, um, even if that means, you know, making a chocolate uh, tower for, <laughs> you know, this, is, uh, this was the Seagram building as chocolate, um, uh, but it was all uh, 3D printed. So, so, you know, I mean, I think we need to be more imaginative with techno technology and, 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 and making today. Um, a lot of these ideas uh, sort of transfer and, and cross-fertilize with the other architecture programs in urban design. There's a real, I know you've heard, I'm sure, from Kate Orff and, and David Smiley this morning, there's a real sense of engagement, of particip participation, of community um, um, sort of building with the Hudson Valley Initiative uh, um, in the first semester, and then kind of expanding to uh, more globally looking at questions of water from, from you know, Jordan and systems um, to uh, 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 and, and this was a recent uh, studio travel in Aqaba um, to kind of engaging questions of water in India, etc. And so that sense of kind of engagement of, of uh, especially collaboration amongst the students is, is, and systems thinking kind of percolates uh, across all of the other programs. And um, in the same way, I think a lot of the kind of critical uh, sort of positioning really uh, emerges out of the CCCP program um, led by uh, Mark Wasuda and Felicity Scott, uh, which is a small by its size but incredibly impactful by um, sort of its sort of thinking um, scale. And uh, CCCP has an incredible set of a network of alumni, but also relationships with other. Um, curators and institutions uh, around the city. This, um, this is Karen Wong, who teaches here, who is a um, co-director at, the, at the, the new museum. And so all of that, if you've picked up abstract, is sort of trying to uh, sort of makes it in this, you know, is creating a, a, a space which we hope is um, a space for you to articulate your position vis-a-vis -vis architecture. And and so, because this is a question that always comes up, and I don't want to, um, the question of thesis, while thesis exists in some of the um, programs such as CCCP, a planning uh, program, or, or the um, historic preservation program, in architecture we almost, we feel like every semester should be your thesis. Every semester you should claim a position, and at the end, uh, often, uh, the, stu the students, you know, bring out those positions in their portfolios, and so if you've seen some of the portfolios online, they are a kind of combination of, 
of a lot of the questioning and, and, and sort of positioning and experimenting that the students have developed over the, their time here at the school. Another strong uh, point and something that's been developing over the past few years is this sense of interdisciplinarity and, 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 and cross sort of transfers between the programs. Um, you know, we have uh, so many different programs here at every, you know, get a cut across scale and finding ways to intersect them has been a kind of project. So we have um, shared joint studios uh, between historic preservation and, and architecture. We've had now a number of studios between uh, urban planning and architecture. This is a, a studio that was just in Genoa, working with the, with the municipality um, there. Um, we have kind of carved, because everything is a question of schedule and you know, finding time for students you know, to engage carved um, uh, Friday mornings for cross-program uh, uh, seminars and lectures that the school can take as a, as a whole. Um, events are also a way, if you, you know, if you don't have time to take a class in another program, you know, following the events and the lecture series from other programs is a way also to engage Malo Hudson, thinking about health and the city and, and, and t describing um, his new lab was, you know, last Friday. And, uh, and another way to intersect is through the summer workshops, uh, which bring together, they are sort of outside of the various curriculums, and so they enable faculty to bring together pro students from different programs, eight to 10 students for two to three weeks, and, and to look at a question in more depth um, during the summer. And so the school being in New York is really uh, a cultural hub, it's an institution kind of that is in dialogue with other institutions uh, from the very intense and active event uh, and, and lecture series that, that we hold, which is, are all public, um, which you know, bring uh, everything from kind of, uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, sort of exciting new uh, practicing uh, architects to uh, people who are sort of working on the frontier or on the edges of architecture um, to collaborating with other schools. This was a collaboration with the School of the Arts and we invited Ai Weiwei to talk about his work. And a lot of these are the, you know, broadcast and, uh, and sort of made public also through the um, two kind of conversations that are online. Um, the exhibition, uh, you've seen, you've, I hope you've dropped by Ross Gallery, but you know, ties to the curriculum and to the uh, questions of the school in, in sort of tangential ways, questions of, 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 of representation and uh, questions of sort of expanding practice or how architects are today using their skills to do uh, um, other things such as uh, Liam Young's kind of sci-fi, uh, let's say, uh, uh, work and movies that describe sort of dystopian futures to working with uh, uh, rising stars such as Frida Escobedo uh, uh, and, and try to give them a platform uh, or diving into archives such as the current uh, work of Arakawa and Gins. If you want to know how not to die um, <laughs> uh, through architecture, you should go see the show because they thought that this was possible. Um, and a lot of you know the events and exhibitions are also supported by the very strong sort of publication um, office and you know our students often ask you know can I engage with writing and 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 yes there's always ways that that, that you can engage that we've had some incredible student run uh, publications here that started at the school and are now sort of at the at the GSEP incubator um, and it's again another way to kind of claim uh, claim position and, and contribute to the discourse and practice of architecture. Um, and then collaborating with other institutions, um, maybe for those of you who might you know, have some time in New York, the new campus up uh, on 125th Street is quite exciting and the, for the uh, opening of the Landfest Center for the Arts, uh, we had the opportunity uh, to the Buell Center um, and, uh, and the, um, 
and, and a number of other institutions, including uh, MoMA and every library, joined together to, um, uh, to sort of have parallel shows on Frank Lloyd Wright, and in this case it was on the question of Wright and his intersect, Broadacre City and the intersection with housing in Harlem, which is kind of really fascinating exhibition, working with Storefront for Art and Architecture, um, working uh, with Design Biennales um, around the world. This was in Studio X Istanbul, um, in Shenzhen, uh, in uh, the Hong Kong Biennale recently, where some of the work of Adam Frampton uh, uh, was exhibited, or having students also uh, collaborate on projects um, such as the, the Tatiana Bal Bilbao's Tower for the, the Chicago Architecture Biennale, um, and then um, uh, which also featured a, a project by, by Hillary Sample and Moss. And our exhibitions also travel. Um, this was the exhibition on uh, Shadirji's uh, photographs that traveled to the Graham uh, uh, foundation in, in Chicago, um, or working here with the Queens uh, Museum. This was uh, called Never Built New York. All the projects in the last 10 years that were never built, and students uh, working with Josh Jordan made models. And so the sense of always being able to collaborate with cultural institutions around the city is, is quite strong, um, but also around the world. This is a workshop led by Mario Good and, and Mabel Wilson for an upcoming exhibition in, in Munich um, on African mobilities. Um, we hosted a conference on art and cities in, in Beirut, um, or again, the Studio X Rio hosted this, uh, this sort of study on, on housing for, uh, for the United Nations Habitat Three conference uh, recently. Engagement uh, is at the core of, I think, where the school um, is, where it wants to go and continue going, whether it's through scholarship um, and research to the, num the centers um, that are tied and, and sort of working in parallel to, to the core of the school from the Buell Center uh, and its research that has spanned uh, the question of housing. This was a show uh, at MoMA and at the Center for Architecture um, to now the question of, of power and infrastructure and there's now a Buell Prize for um, projects that uh, engage with the Paris Accord. Um, the Center for Spatial Research really look, is, is really at the cutting edge of, of, of data visualization and the kind of, uh, and, and its connection to the built environment. Um, and if you, again, if you go to Manhattanville, there's a great installation uh, by Laura Kurgan. Um, um, called the Brain Index, or the recently launched uh, Center for Resilient Cities and Landscape, directed by Kate Orff, which we're really excited to kind of uh, have as, as continuing to, to find ways to, to, to engage these uh, important issues. And then smaller initiatives, and uh, such as Take Comprators Waste Initiatives, um, or the um, GSAP Incubator, which some of you might have visited this morning, where uh, we support up to 30 of our recent alumni, and we give them kind of a desk for almost free to sort of experiment with the question of practice and finding new ways to engage uh, um, in the world. Uh, and this is our happy class of 2017-2018. Very happy. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, they, they, you can always visit them and, and I think they, it's a kind of way to thicken the space between the school and what you do on, on the outside. And finally, I'd like to say that I think uh, the sense of collegiality, of, of generosity, of openness, and uh, the sense of community, I think, is really important here um, at the school, whether it's co collegiality amongst you, and, and in the end, you will learn uh, as much, if not more, from each other than you will learn from us. Um, but also the fact that being in New York means you have like this incredible uh, sort of um, group of people out there that are just within, you know, five minutes ride on the, well, maybe these days with the subway, half an hour ride from, you know, they can come that you can engage with in, in terms of your own work. 
um, and, and whether in an informal way, whether through uh, career services or whether um, through events where we kind of invite alumni back to, to speak about the work that they're, they're doing, whether it's here um, or working with our faculty on you know, research projects that they're currently doing, um, including you know, uh, buildings or you know, um, this was uh, shops, uh, kind of 3D printed installation um, and, and at Design Miami last year, so we kind of keep in touch with our alumni uh, and always uh, uh, find ways to sort of hijack our faculty's work to you know, allow for great parties to happen for our current students. Um, this was Andres Hake's installation at um, PS1 MoMA um, and inviting alumni back um, such as Evan Sharp to kind of honor them and, and also hear from them. Uh, Evan long started Pinterest and it's also interesting how he took architectural thinking and kind of moved it in a completely different um, and direction. If you're interested, um, next gathering is at ADO, designed by uh, Eric Bungi and, and Mimi Wong in Brooklyn. And this is how the end looks like. Um, uh, well, or the beginning, sorry, it's kind of the end for us and the beginning for you, um, uh, you know, where we sort of graduate our students in uh, former Dean uh, Bernard Toomey's building down uh, at the entrance of uh, Broadway and, and, and 116th Street, and everyone is happy, and, <laughs> and we're sad, and, um, and so this is it, in a kind of few minutes taking you uh, through what an experience here at the school might feel like. Um, so I'd like to invite the faculty to join me. Should we uh, maybe introduce yourself? Do you want to just say your name and, and um, what you do? Yes. Hi, I'm David Benjamin. Um, I'm assistant professor here. I uh, coordinate uh, Studio 4 in the MARC program, and I'm also director of the GSAP incubator, so I met some of you this morning. Hi, I'm Laura Kirkan, associate professor of architecture, and I'm director of visual studies and the Center for Spatial Research. Hi, I'm Mimi Huang. I'm um, adjunct assistant professor. I coordinate the second semester of the MARC 1 sequence, and I teach in the AAD program. And um, my practice is called N Architect. Uh, I'm Felicity Scott. I'm co director of the CCCP program with Marco Suter, and I'm the director of the PhD program in architecture. Hi, um, I'm Reinhold Martin. I direct the history and theory sequence in the MARC program, and uh, I also direct the Buell Center for the Study of American Architecture across the way. Hi, I'm Hilary Sample. I'm uh, director of the MR Core program. I coordinate the housing studio. Um, I'm an associate professor here and founder of Moss Architects. Kate Orff, an um, associate professor and director of the urban design program and also of the new Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes. I'm David Smiley, Assistant Director of the Urban Design Program. I'm Juan Herreros, Professor of Practice, teaching Advanced Studio, and also Director of the Advanced Studios, and running together with Enrique Walker the Transfer Dialogue Series. I'm Craig Schwitter, I'm an Associate uh, Professor of Practice, and I lead the Building Technology Sequence. Uh, Adam Frampton, adjunct assistant professor teaching uh, core and advanced studio and uh, workshops in the summer. Andres Hake, I'm adjunct uh, uh, professor and I'm teaching advanced studios. I take Carpenter, uh, I'm adjunct assistant professor and I teach in the core studios and I also run summer workshops uh, and I'm also director of the Waste Initiative. I'm Christoph Kumbusch, I'm adjunct associate professor, I coordinate core one and direct the extraction laboratory. I'm Enrique Walker. I direct the AD program. All right, Laun launch away, <laughs> or you know, whatever questions you might have to for me for the faculty. Um, this is very informal, as you can see by the lineup. <laughs>
Otherwise, we're going to start asking you questions. <laughs> I saw a hand. Yes? I said this could be for any of the faculty, but also potentially the dean. Um, we've talked a lot about the current state of GSAP and kind of its history, which is all um, really exciting. But what is your kind of vision for the future trajectory, excuse me, trajectory, and kind of how you see that playing out um, within the program? Um, the future is unwritten. <laughs> I, I, I really uh, think that, um, I think, and I want everybody to, to weigh in, but it's about plant, planting seeds to literally prepare you um, for the world that is to come. You know, it's not for the world that is today, because it's really, and it's very hard to know what is, we can't know what the world is going to need in 10 years, but we, we can find kind of lines of inquiry or, or things that are bubbling up and, and, and give you the tools to address them. So. For me, I would say that I, I really believe that today, if you think about all the most important issues that we are going to face in terms of the built environment, in terms of cities, and they're completely connected to what architects do and what architecture and the thinking about cities and the environment can do. So how we can give you the knowledge, the the curiosity, the sort of uh, the means to find a, a space where you can bring architecture and architectural thinking to these questions is where we, where I'd like the school to be. Um, and, and even if we fail, and I, I talked to a student today, and they were like, I said, you know, he he asked, what what is a successful student here? And I said, it's, it's a student who's not afraid of failing, who is taking risks, and who. Is, is really kind of ready to, and I know it's hard, you're here for a short time and, and the pressure to succeed is, is so important, but on the other hand, it's, we want you to open up and, and see what's possible and enable you to have the freedom to do that when, when you get out. So, I don't know if anybody wants to. What do you think? <laughs> what should we do? <laughs> um, I think it's an exceptional question with a million different answers, but I think the fact that this dialogue's happening right now, just me back and forth, you know, with the panel is, is a, a sign that's in the right direction, you know, the open discourse and the, uh, the ability to have back and forth impact between each other is, is uh, definitely key. Um, I think we're well suited to carry the practice. <laughs> I guess this is back to the faculty on that same question. What do you see are upcoming challenges that we will face that we need to start creating answers for? Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's okay, Kate. Okay. Well, I. In, um, I think across the programs, and I think the dean was able to kind of synthesize and weave this story that really connects all the programs so expertly. Across the programs, the, I mean, um, uh, the themes that were mentioned, I think, uh, that bear, um, that have special import are um, certainly are changing climate and increasing uncertainty and extreme weather facing cities, buildings, any scale that you want to touch. There's going to be a, a, a new environment that we can expect. Um, I think that particular challenge overlaid with questions of equity and justice are also paramount. Um, the way that cities and landscapes are um, in this process of transformation now is literally creating uh, an entirely uh, new way of thinking about, in, in, in the case of the urban design program, cities not as these sort of static bounded entities, but literally composed of, frankly, uh, people on the move. Uh, and in some cases, I saw um, from Laura's uh, center a map uh, that was shown up here from the Center for um, Spatial Research, a 
uh, an image of uh, uh, the, the map of the Syrian refugee, uh, this uh, by Juan Saldriaga. Like literally we have to begin to overlay these profound questions and challenges. So climate overlaid with social justice issues, overlaid with access and equity, overlaid with um, environment and ecosystem questions. I, I feel like the, there's not necessarily one single challenge, but it's let, literally how these uh, are nested and impact each other. Um, um, and so in, in particular in the urban design studio, we are studying the city through this lens of, of systems and understanding these infrastructure and systems, but always kind of scaling that down to how these systems uh, express themselves spatially in a place where people live, you know. So I, I think in, in our case, um, it's literally those nested uh, challenges uh, and then understanding what is the agency of the designer in that situation are, are the kind of questions that we're always trying to, to, to ask and, uh, and to, um, to, to address through this sort of iterative, iterative and, and creative design process. At a tiny um, um, point there, which is that that and maybe to come back to the dean's opening remark that we're not futurologists, and in a way, we we train students to understand how to navigate complex problems that are actually not known. So, to answer a problem for today is to, you know, uh, you know, in some senses, you know, not prepare the students to answer a problem that emerges tomorrow. So the sort of framework of, of, um, that we really set out is a, a framework of, of, of questioning, of strategizing, certainly of answering specific questions, but not of trying to imagine that we can you know, solve a big question in the future because that's to, um, in a way, sort of blind students to all of the contingencies and uncertainties to come back to Kate's point that um, that shifts so rapidly in the current context. I mean, I think we can all add other, um, uh, you know, sp specific concerns, but but I think in a way it's a, a way of um, you know training students to to certainly know where to look, you know, how to understand, how to think about the complexity of a situation that that might not resolve into. A, sort of historical type of, you know, of, of, of answer, like a solution, mm -hmm. but a way of addressing a sort of ongoing set of um, problems that they're going to face, that the world will face, that the city will face, et cetera. I would add that um, precisely that we don't teach you what to think, what to work on, but more how to reframe the question and how to reimagine how architecture um, uh, is, is um, a valuable way in um, engaging with the pressing issues of, um, that we face. And at Columbia, I, you know, a lot of these issues come from where we sit, which is in a very dense urban metropolis. And so in terms of specific things, density, um, definitely density in housing, but for every pressure, to increase density and to accommodate people. There's the equal and opposite pressure to protect um, public and civic space. So just thinking about the sequence between core two and core three. In core two, we're um, focused on that um, civic and public space, the public institution. And then core three is about density and housing and, and housing um, f for that. But I think, you know, Every one of us can answer this question in a different way, and um, the dean's address um, every year um, at this time of year is always this kind of, you know, like drinking from a fire hydrant, even from for us as faculty, because I sit there thinking, wow, there is a lot going on in this school that I need to be more aware of. Um, connecting both questions, uh, and from the perspective of the, of the uh, advanced studios, that means the third year for the MRC students and second and third semester for the AADs. The plan is to create the most uh, speculative and experimental environment uh, to explore the, the present with the freedom enough to be sure that uh, our task is to, to build the future. So we are architects, we are designers, 
And the question is how to translate into architecture all the cultural, technical, theoretical, social, political, uh, etc., uh, equations that build the present. We have to you know, transform it into design questions and design decisions. Uh, that means that pointing the title of an exhibition that actually Andres Hake has installed, is the designer of the installation this last year. Uh, the future is not what is going to happen, the future is what we are going to do. So uh, the question is not how the others, uh, what the others are going to do for the future, but what we are ready to do, or, or what is our engagement, as has been pointed here. Uh, in the construction of that future. And I think that all the answers about the different programs are more or less you know, approaching this, this position. Hi, um, uh, this is a question about, um, I guess, the program self-reflectance upon how the structure of it is. Um, I'm curious, with such a diverse student body and uh, a very um, compressed type of time period in which you're doing the program, um, what, are some of or what are some examples of maybe contentious issues or complaints current or recent students have had about the structure of the program? and um, I'm curious about how the program has responded or changed to those um, to those complaints or contentious issues. Which, which yeah. Oh, I, I just mean if you've heard of them. I don't know of, uh, specific which ones because I know. The, the oh, program or the AAD program? Um, uh, as I think the school in general, I'm curious about, but I'm curious about the UD program. Well, okay, so I, one of the challenges that um, is both a, a, I mean, the, the dean spoke to this issue of we, we don't have a thesis. So, I mean, I, I, I feel like that's a, a, a challenge, but also a tremendous opportunity, and that's also something that, that David and I have been trying to address within the space of the urban design program. Um, because uh, the way that the program is structured, similar to AAD, is that it's a three-semester post-professional degree program where you have a very intensive summer, in the case of urban design, focusing on the five boroughs of New York City and the sort of dynamism of, the, uh, of New York. Um, the second uh, studio in the fall, which is more regional in scale, and, and last year focused on uh, the Hudson Valley and is really um, addressing, you know, as being kind of um, inter interfaces strongly with the Hudson Valley Initiative, and very real pro challenges and, and, and uh, opportunities in the Mid-Hudson Valley. And then in the spring, we have a kind of global uh, cities uh, and, and, and sort of international travel. And I guess um, how we've, and the students have often said, okay, well, <laughs> I'm graduating. I'm not done thinking about these questions. And, and um, so we've done a, a number of things. One is launch the Hudson Valley Initiative, which is a format in which literally students from the fall semester, which David t teaches in, can then um, re-examine and explore some of the thematics from their fall studio project within a slightly more formalized period with Kaya Kuhl, Kuhl who you met uh, upstairs. Um, so, for example, we have uh, two groups of students who won, uh, we have a prize called the Urban Urge Prize, who basically were able to reinvent their sort of fall studio project and understand incrementally, well, how would you do this, what would you do as a very first step now? So they received um, an award uh, and are uh, spending now the following summer to kind of re-engage and, and help that project kind of plant a seed uh, towards um, uh, towards a sort of transformation of an urban environment, in, the, in that case in Poughkeepsie. Um, and similarly, with the, uh, the new Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes, the goal is uh, in our um, spring studio, uh, where we uh, travel to this, this year we were in Aqaba, Jordan, uh, and in Varanasi, India. Uh, the goal is that these, um, and, and is that these studio sites also then provide 
and uh, very direct opportunities for the student to continue their work in some way, literally either working here in New York at the center or working with our kind of partner cities. Um, and so it's a chance for, I mean, I always think that that's one of the best things about being in an academic environment is it is experimental. You don't answer the questions of now. You're kind of projecting forward and anticipating and kind of trying to develop a, a methodology that um, is robust and can anticipate things that you, are, or environments or, or, or uh, conditions that are not expected in the present. Um, uh, but what is exciting is we have provided these avenues for those thought experiments to actually play out in the real world. And that's how we've responded to that critique. Yeah, and just for, for other students, I, I teach both in urban design um, and in the architecture program. And I think in the architecture program, there's an incredible array of studios which progress as you move through the advanced sequence. And, and then you have choice, right? And I think that there's many tracks that you, that you can take through the school based on, based on your interests. So you know, if you're interested in biology and ecology, or if you're interested in, I don't know, Mimi, um, what, uh, you know, micro housing and uh, fabrication or you know uh, visual representation and and engineering the way Craig and I are starting to do together so there's there's all kinds of ways where you can look across the faculty at the kinds of studios that are offered and you know find a way through the school and there might be three or four different tracks and I always think that that's incredibly unique um, about Columbia and it's something that you can start in your first year and end up being very focused by the end of your third year. And we've seen a lot of that. And then those students move over into the incubator or start new research or start their own firms um, or go and work for the, you know, their dream architect. There's so many different uh, ways that you can make your way through the school. I, I thought I <clears throat> sorry, could add a little bit to some of these other questions, too, um, from the point of view of the historian. Uh, we have a number of historians on our uh, panel. Um, but uh, starting with the future part, um, because you know the first question is what happened? You know, what happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? In order to make any kind of sense of any kind of future. Uh, and, uh, and the question uh, that you're, you're just asking about problems, these things can be very pragmatic. And, and we share some of these. I mean, it's certainly something that I've experience. Some of the, these are kind of big, the world historical questions that are being discussed, like climate and so on. But then there are really pragmatic things, and they are connected. Um, like, you know, why do you give us so much reading to do? Uh, and, you know, they, people don't really complain about that. They just come to class, and they haven't been able to do the reading. And then you can tell they feel a little embarrassed. And, and it, you know, I think it's, it's I like this drinking from a water fountain problem, <laughs> I mean, from a fire hydrant. It's like there's too much, to, you know, really is a lot of work. I mean, this is a serious advanced degree for well, any of these degrees. There's a lot of work, and each one of the segments of this, the curricula are very ambitious about what they do, and, and the history element is, is no less so. But to, you know, in the spirit of this kind of open inquiry, one of the ways we've begun to think a, a, a little more systematically about how how we do this, and there still will be uh, a lot of reading, although we're going to start asking you to do some things over the summer now. But um, so you know, stay tuned. But but anyway, the, um, no is 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 that you know you can ask uh, why do I have to even study history uh, in in a, ma a master's of architecture program? I'm studying the future, not the past, and and why do I need this? And, and the answer is not because it's going to be useful to you in designing the future, actually. I don't think that that's one possible answer. You know, you can draw, of course, on, on the examples that we offer. Um, but, but maybe a more, a more relevant answer uh, is, is that one of the things that the thing that we call history has to do with the development of human beings uh, and our, in, uh, you know, in, in, as individuals and in our, in our lives together. And architecture is uniquely, is kind of interestingly, kind of in the middle of that, you know, wherever you look. Uh, and, and so you could think about that aspect of what you do here uh, as an extension of maybe the more humanities-oriented aspects of your current or previous education, that reading and the kind of questions you ask and so on, um, that might kind of very concretely uh, address uh, equity issues 
uh, the questions of representation. Um, uh, Dean Andreas showed, showed the, um, the slide collection that we're developing. It's not slides anymore, it's, it's scans. Um, but it's very interesting. So this isn't even raised. It's, wasn't, it's not really a question per se, the problem that's raised. It's something that we have collectively noticed and it's been pointed out in some cases. You know, the history of architecture is very white and very male. And, and we've tried to, you know, transform this in, in, in the teaching in whatever ways we can. One of which is, is by, by actually making an effort, and our colleague Mary McLeod has been very active in this uh, as well, in, in using our wonderful Avery Library to scan the work of women architects and add that to our collection. We have now collections of architecture from all over the world. It's interesting how Sub-Saharan Africa gets le left out of that equation. It's also interesting to, to see how um, the work of African-American architects uh, is, is left out of those kinds of you know, equations, even by the most well-meaning efforts. So, so we've made specific efforts to, to uh, address those uh, um, absences, those, those exclusions, because they're not just absences, they're exclusions. Uh, and, and so... You had to do a bit of data analysis. Huh? You had to do a bit of data analysis Yeah, I know, we should. I know, we got to collaborate on this. <laughs> the metadata is, is nuts. Um, but anyway, so, so the point is, uh, you know, I think you could probably go down the line and you'll hear a kind of self-critique in various ways. This is a concrete example of a form of self-critique that, that we, we tried that, that affects, and that's why there's a lot of reading. Because to, it, to be able to think about these things, you have to actually do that kind of work. And again, it's true for all the other elements. Yeah, just to add, add on to an observation of, of, of this, I think that to Dean's point about density and, and experimentation, the, the, the density of the programs here are, are really interesting. The programs evolve and change with your agency. I, I, I've been at GSAP now for maybe four years, and, and even in that short period of time, there is a lot of change that is going on in and amongst all of the people sitting here, which is really quite remarkable. And I, I think that, that that density is important. Also, the density and adjacency of New York City and practice. Now, I'm a practicing engineer, and, and many of us practice here, and, and that adjacency is also really forcing change at the school. So I, I encourage you to think about your education here as part of that process, about taking that agency on to you and to force that change, because I think it's, this is really one of the key elements and attributes of this school. So, so take it by the reins, enjoy it. Um, so I've got a question for Professor Quack Sweeter. Um, so can you give us a little bit introductions about your course relating to your uh, research topic, maybe about building science and technology sequence, and um, what's your foresight about um, the technology and how does that influence the architecture design in the future, maybe? Okay. Uh, the <laughs> it's not a crystal ball today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think in general, our, our approach to technology is um, for incoming students with not a lot of background, basics. Um, we go through uh, basic building science, structures, environments, and, and envelope systems. For more advanced students, we also have required courses in integration because technology is not about its subset anymore in architecture. It's about how it's integrated into practice. If you see virtually any very successful architecture firm now, it's very integrated into their practice. So we teach that both at building scale and at urban scale, what I call urban scale systems. So, and I think that also allows integration to your studios and to other programs. So it's really all about not making it a subset of the school, but making it more integrated. Um, you know, and in terms of, uh, you know, my, my, this is my view on it because this is how I practice. And this is the way that I see the world shaping and changing. So I would just say, you know, one of my goals here at the school, and I think a goal for teaching you in terms of the tech sequence, is to make sure you do not think of this as something that is just a sideline to your career, but something that is integral to what you do and can actually really supercharge you. I was wondering maybe if also, you know, from the other side, maybe Hillary and David, 
from the design side want to describe how that connects to the studio work or um, well uh, so from the perspective of uh, studio four which is the fourth semester studio required for MR students um, our themes are as as you've heard and as um, Kate was discussing things like environment and scale. Um, but we also very much are exploring different ways that technology, including building technologies, but also representational technologies, can be a part of the design process. So really, in a slightly different way than Craig is saying, but still with the same keyword of integration, we're interested in you know how you can, how each critic and in turn each student can design a project that is experimenting with technology and at the same time critical of technology and um, looking at environmental issues but at the same time looking at cultural and social issues and thinking about taking a position within this you know kind of field of different important topics and issues and opportunities and experimenting with claiming a, a position you know, taking a stance and exploring it through design, you know, through moments across scales from the scale of the brick to the scale of the building to the scale of infrastructures. Um, and so it's a, it's a real moment for, for students to take a lot of what they've learned in the core with Hillary and others and um, apply it, um, you know, to their, to their own ideas in a way. Um, where technology is not necessarily taking the lead, but is not necessarily left behind. Yeah, I think maybe just to touch on it a little bit for the core, for the MARC program, the first three semesters, I think we're um, actively meeting as faculty, talking about the assignments and ways in which we're thinking about design in relation to um, all of these things, technology, history, representation, um, and those things are thought through in all of the problems. So. It's, it's not really easy to answer the question specifically only to one thing, let's say, because we're, we're thinking about all of these things that go into the assignments across each program. And so even from, from some of the slides that were shown, the, the first assignment where the students were building with Christoph and faculty, uh, the, the object that would sink or swim in the pool or gra gravity being applied to um, the library studio that um, Mimi leads where we're thinking a lot about um, structures and um, you know, from the weight of books to um, what kinds of spaces can hold the most amount of people, what does that mean for community, let's say events, um, to then housing, which is the course that I uh, teach and lead with other faculty and think through all of those problems of you know, what does it mean to bring together a group of people um, living and what are those needs for living today in cities and to think about it not as through families, let's say, which has been the kind of traditional lens that we think about housing, but rather think about households. And, and what does that mean? How do you define a household even? Um, and is that through data collection, through census, through um, community meetings, um, through um, you know, prefabrication and technologies and labor and maintenance? I could kind of go down the list about these things, but we really try to think through all those things. And housing as a studio um, is also a group project, so it's usually in pairs, so you have a partner, so you're also thinking not just about your own views, but you have to work collaboratively in that way. And also in that um, semester, you're taking a lot of uh, technology courses also, um, you know, that Craig and David, that we, we're all, and with Reinhold, also all talking about um, th that idea um, of, of what that, what is technology? What is it in relation to to living, to living in an urban condition, um, and other things. I mean, it's also thinking about all of your other questions today too. Just I wanted to say that um, one of the things with Housing Studio is that we spend time going out into into the city. The the studio is based here in New York, but we do travel. So last year we went to Chicago as a kind of sister city and looked at um, the condition of housing across. You know, it's not just social or affordable housing, but luxury. Like it's a full gamut that we consider. Um, but really try to reflect on those issues of what does it mean to create, again, household or community. Um, and so the first day of school for housing
Housing Studio, we walk from here to our site in the South Bronx. Um, we meet in the Bronx Art Museum, which while it's one of the most well-known art institutions in New York City, it really functions like a local community museum. And that's a very interesting way to be, um, to, to get a kind of insertion into that particular neighborhood and understand the, the problems um, and the history and think about the, the future of that community and, and its relationship to all these things. So, anyways. Great. Uh, hi. So, I guess I'm going to apologize in advance because this was an open-ended question, but... Uh, can you speak up? Hi, can you hear me? Um, yeah. So, I, I think as much as we all try to escape it, we're living in a very charged political moment uh, with the president who proclaims to be a builder. And, and, you know, I think, I guess I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, it seems to drag in a lot of normally non-political organizations into actually engaging with advocacy and how do, how do we sort of, as potential architects, and, and I guess, how do you as an institution start to grapple with some of these, you know, the political divides in our country, and, and is that sort of something that influences, or is, I guess, starting to influence how you teach and, and how we work? Sorry, yeah, I was saying after the elect, the, you know, what you were alluding to, the 2016 election, we, we sat, sat here with the, with the history class, actually, uh, and discussed history, which was what we were witnessing, in other words, and what we continue to witness, um, you know, as, as citizens, but, but very importantly, not only of this country. And I think that's a very important thing to recognize about, you know, a broad political question like that, uh, that, that this is... Um, this institution is, you know, I say this as a director of the Center for the Study of American Architecture, so, you know, uh, this is, this is a, a very, very international institution. And, and at that time, it was very interesting to hear the perspectives and questions and concerns of students from all over the world uh, about what it meant to be in this country at this time. And, and so, you know, I, I hear in your question a kind of echo. I, it's uncanny, actually, because it's in the same room, in this, you know, similar environment. Uh, at the same time. I, I don't know, I don't want to speak for others on, on the particulars of, of the issue. Uh, I, I suspect, I think if you went again down the line, you'd hear individual uh, interpretations of the situation, and then you hear some combinations of institutional ones. Um, I, I can give you a very quick answer from the Buell Center point of view, uh, because we're dealing with it more, maybe a little more kind of directly. Um, this weekend we're gonna have a, a conference, uh, not a conference, it's a, it's a workshop. Uh, of a group of architectural historians who've worked on questions of nationalism, of authoritarianism, of fascism, and so on uh, in the past um, to ask the same question uh, of them now. Uh, like people who, you know, who have studied this in some detail. And uh, I don't know what's gonna, you know, what, what the outcome of that, but the idea is that we can do that here because that's what academics do. We, we, we ask questions. And, and we do that in, from an informed perspective, you know, from the point of view, um, in, you know, in, in, I'm suggesting historical context, but it can be many other dimensions as well, uh, from, from the point of view of, uh, of, uh, of in a way, um, uh, knowledge uh, that, that it can be derived from many different sources. And, and you're right that, that, that the particular situation that we're in right now has something like building or real estate or architecture somewhere in the middle of it in various ways. Money, Money right? Uh, you know, I, I, would, I would just ask you to take, take, you know, very, very seriously the fact that when we do the thing that we call architecture, we're participating in the, in the you know, the arts of real estate development very often. Uh, and, and that's, it's a bind that, that, that I think, you know, everybody here has found themselves in one way or the other. Uh, and not only under these circumstances. So that's what I'm trying to suggest, you know, that it's, it kind of articulates with other circumstances that, 
uh, that may put this current circumstance in perspective a little differently, but maybe others have. Just to add that I started teaching here in 2008 in the um, last semester, the Kinney semester, and I remember thinking, sitting through 18 presentations, that all of them were political in some way, and that it, has, it is nothing new at Columbia, that, that the kind of, you know, architecture is a political act. Politics is different. So yes, politics has entered in a much more kind of direct way, but I would say, you know, way, 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 way back that all the architecture studios and urban design, et cetera, that we are always thinking about architecture as a political act um, that reframes how we engage with society. And, yes, Andre should <laughs> add something. Yes, Andre's <laughs> Well, I think you're, the question is very important, very relevant, and very timely. And in a way, it relates also to other questions that we hear, we've heard before. And I think uh, this is the right question maybe to do at this point, and I'm very happy that you're doing it, and it's uh, relating to other things. And, um, and other questions, like for instance, what is the, what is that the, the, what is the way we deal with um, insatisfaction of things that we don't like? Or what is the way that we envision future, even? But the question about politics, I think, is, is great because, in a way, uh, when we take the, f the, f the, f the front page of newspapers now, there's no way to say that architecture is not there e everywhere. So the question is about borders, architecture is there. When we, question about, when, we, when we inquire about technology and secrecy and privacy and public space, architecture is there. But it's there in a way that is challenging design. It's challenging the way we think architecture. And it's challenging it because somehow, for instance, the notions of public space are not the same at the time that public space is happening in private corporations that are dealing with online spaces. For instance, when we talk of uh, the, the, the territory, it's not the same when we think of the amount of people that are traveling and are moving from one place to another. So there's, in all these things, there's challenges for design. There's opportunities for architecture to become relevant. And that is what can happen in a place like this. This is what can happen in universities, and this is what, it ha what is happening now in, in advanced studios that are dealing with the issues that have to do, for instance, with the mineral rights in places like Susquehanna Valley, or that are facing the possibility of, of rethinking citizenship from the point of view of design. I think the question is also, what is the way architecture specifically does politics? What are the specific forms of, architect of politics that are embodied in architectural practices, in architectural thinking. And I think this is something that requires a space like this to, to, to happen. This discussion requires a place like that because it's not that easy for it to happen in, um, uh, in uh, offices. It's not that easy for it to happen in magazines. Uh, but of course, that's something that can only be produced collectively. So as it's been said before, it's not something that can be taught, but it's something that can be addressed together as a common practice, as a co in a collective environment in which history, critical practices, design, can be brought together uh, and uh, produce responses. And that is the kind of environment, I think, that happens here in the advanced studios, for instance, or in the, in the, in the courses that are dealing with politics. And, and I, think, um, I think the atmosphere that we want to foster is one of uh, debate and exchange and conversation and uh, I think all of us, you know, wake up in the mornings, I certainly I speak for myself and coming here and having, you know, the future, you guys, um, there to uh, to think through these things and, you know, it gives, it's, it's um, empowering even at the small scale to be able to exchange and to find a space of exchange and where different, you know, a diverse range of ideas and pos positions can, you know, come come into contact, and where faculty and students are sort of invited to claim a position and find ways in which architecture and design can participate and intervene, uh, you know, in, in in the world that we we are in. So, I. I there is a, your question. I think is is great within the context of like the school and and like building in general. But one of the things we we discussed like earlier in in in, in the build center is that it's not just what's happening like here through the built environment, but also through 
like music, fashion, um, um, exhibitions, and so on and so forth. And we were with some of you um, speaking about Virgil Abloh, who was just speaking here, who you all probably followed, uh, like is doing architecture as an architect through music, through fashion, as like the new head of uh, Louis Vuitton, who if you read through his like announcement that came out, what, two weeks ago, the fifth line in it says, um, I lectured at Columbia GSUB. So they kind of like yeah. like discourse about like <laughs> anytime, architecture anytime. within relation, yeah, but within relation of like fashion, music, um, you know, name it. My point is, I, I, I don't think it's just about architecture as we understand it at this given point. And like one of the questions in there was very much like that as well, right? Like what is the question of practice? And uh, one of the symposiums that happened at the school, like about like architectural practice that like many on that panel were um, like part of, uh, is very much part of also what's happening in the studios, outside of the studios, and what comes after the studios. And sometimes the built environment, politically or not politically, is not just like, like materialized in a way that, that, that we understand architecture at that given point. And um, you know what, seven years ago it would have been unthinkable to, you actually seven years ago had Gucci Sue virtual um, on on like the use of like Gucci at that like case. Uh, I could go on about this forever. Now he's like running that whole story, and you're gonna run things that you probably can never imagine that you're ever even gonna be part of, and that's just part of reality, or at least the way we I think could define it here. Maybe we'll take uh, one last question. Yes. Uh, sure. So I I don't expect. Everybody. <laughs> it's good because we might hear it. <laughs> so I was, I was saying that I was saying that I'd be interested to know how maybe at least some of you came to choose Columbia. Can I start? Yes, please. <laughs> um, I, you know, um, I, I taught, like many of us here, I taught in many, many different schools. I, I didn't go here for graduate school. I won't say where I went. Um, but I, I have to say, and I, I mean it, and you have to believe me, I, I really, uh, for me, it's home. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's a place where I, I've lived all over the world, and, you know, and I, when I came here, I felt that there was room for me, that there was room to grow. Um, to ask questions, to expand the canon, to, to you know, and and I think this sense of generosity, intellectual generosity, the diversity of ideas, the 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 sense of belonging to kind of some form of you know collective, and I, I think it's very unique to Colombia um, and a very different uh, from other schools. I've and I never thought I would become dean. I mean, who wants to become dean, really? But but I love the school. I, I really believe in. I mean, you know, the faculty is in, is just um, there's a kind of level of um, I don't know uh, engagement, passion, and uh, and I think. Uh, uh, you know, I meet with students all the time. I mean, to the question of like concerns and and you know, they're always you know the door is open. You you can uh, and uh, and we we hear them and it's a feedback loop and uh, and we're kind of ready to to take risks and and so it's so that's my story. But I will let others speak. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say very quickly that, I mean, for me, especially, I feel like the urban design program is is unmatched, literally. There is not another uh, place where, so I have a background in landscape architecture and, and somewhat in architecture and also in, in urbanism. I think there is literally no other place to study um, the urbanism questions in this way, and in a way that's uh, jointly sort of uh, uh, research intensive, but also design driven. And there is not a cookie cutter urban design student. I mean, I'm on reviews all around uh, the world and it's like, well, this is, you know, this is the kind of student that comes out of this program and they're ready to go and whatever, you know, it's, 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 it's not, it's, 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 it's an approach that is constantly questioning, that's constantly experimental, and that isn't coming from a preset uh, point of beginning. And so, and so for me, it's, 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 it's this kind of 
way to study the complexity that we keep kind of coming back to in a way that's very driven, a way that's very focused. And I think you, you won't find, I mean, I think it's that sort of combination of, of the condenser uh, combined with this kind of in incredible creativity that infiltrates all, all the programs here. You know, um, in, in the end, I think um, schools are self-selecting. I'm going around to a lot of universities nowadays with my daughter, and you get these, like, pitches, you know. Undergrad is even more intense than, uh, than graduate. You, you can't believe it. But I, I love Columbia because of the faculty. There's, an, uh, it, there's the faculty here um, are incredibly energetic, they're incredibly, um, they learn from their students, but there's, but there's the students actually are why I'm here as well. And there's, I don't know, there's some kind of incredible mix over here between the kind of faculty that choose Columbia because they're here in New York. Um, they've chosen New York as a place to practice and that has its own special variety of people um, that do that. And the students that come here, I think come here for that exact same reason. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just, I was a student here, I became a faculty here only, you know, 15 years after that. Um, and I was incredibly happy that first day I walked onto the campus, and I, I still am. I just, I think that there's a very um, special mixture over here that you, that you don't find um, at other schools. And just, I'll make my own pitch for the, for the visual studies program. I, I don't think that you'll find the range of, uh, computation technology classes um, at any at any other school you know we have how many are there now like 18 Too many. Uh, visuals <laughs> visual technology now workshops um, you know that go from gaming to fabrication to uh, visualization to all you know just uh, the range of things is is quite staggering so that's why I like Columbia <laughs> I, I'd it's a also great like, question, by the way. Yeah, it's a really good question. <laughs> I'd also like to kind of um, maybe avoid answering your question, um, or say one reason that um, I've I enjoy being here. I've kind of um, st stayed teaching here, and I think it is um, it's the kind of energy from the students and the kind of diversity of you know perspectives and voices that you get um, amongst the amongst. Um, the kind of uh, MRC students who, who I teach, and I think the, um, you know, I, I think it's true at any school that there's really kind of like this, the diversity of perspectives and opinions, but I think one thing specifically about GSAP and one discussion that um, has really come from the bottom up has been, you know, the question of practice. So not only what, what voice or, or language do we take on as designers, but kind of how do we do it? And I think, you know, you see the programs, there are these programs and the symposia like the constructing practice, but I think it is also kind of very much a discussion um, that a lot of the students are having amongst themselves and with us about, you know, how do we, how do we, in, how do we engage with the world when we're, we're done with here? And I think for also speaking on behalf of a lot of the kind of core faculty, like it's a question that we're kind of facing as practitioners too, right? Like how do we, how do we practice? How do we, how do we meaningfully engage? Um, and so that's, I think for me, been, yeah, very, um, very helpful and meaningful as a, um, as a faculty. Oh, you want I, I was just going to say that I came here by accident. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad, <laughs> but I cannot confess any intentionality. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, the thing that I think many of us kind of enjoy, we've been arguing for years. And, and in some of us really, truly for, you know, generations at this point, but, 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 but it, it, it's like your thing. You know, you can, what's really, I think, keeps us, I, me at least, I, you know, kind of uh, more or less uh, alert I I to these things is that you cannot assume agreement. You know, you cannot, I mean, you know, this, it didn't, it's amazing, it's sort of like, it's a little bit under the radar in this type of discussion. I actually came here through juries first. The, my first experience here, like I think many, uh, was being on design juries and like arguing with everybody else on the design jury. And, and that institution and, and the way I think it's sustained itself here is a very important kind of informal 
you know, it's, it's the place where you suspect, the, you, you know, if anybody gives you the party line, then, then you can immediately challenge it. So, you know, the skepticism that I think Laura's alluding to is, 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 is sort of, um, yeah, pr very productive. And, you know, the, the kind of golden rule would be don't assume consensus. And, and, and the minute, you know, that happens, then, you know, forget it. It's not, not interesting, so. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna add, um, I was just gonna add that I think as a faculty member being here, I think there's also a level at which I feel like a student as well because of the quality of discussions, because of the diversity of discussions and the ways in which, I mean, even if you just think about each of the faculty members here and what they re represent in terms of their work, I think that you can kind of have a microcosm of things that are happening in architecture all at once. And there's just, I mean, the abundance of discussions can actually be overwhelming, but I think it's that, it's going back to that fire hydrant idea, right? <laughs> and the kind of, uh, the absorption and the kind of full immersion in the, in the dialogue at the school, I think is possible here. Um, and, and I think just, uh, you know, I, I think that there's also a level at which the students here are willing to redefine constantly and question, redefine what it would mean to be an architect um, and what it would mean to sort of act in the world with a design background. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a building, right? It could be, you know, how do you start to design a building? It could be from a material detail, right? It could be from a question of environment. And I think it's just that, for me, it's very exciting to work with students who are like that and with a faculty that support that kind of uh, design thinking. I, I really appreciate the question because you said uh, that we chose Columbia. And in fact, uh, Ryan Hull is uh, right about saying that there was something pertinent to us, but, uh, but by accepting, you choose, in fact. I, I was, of course, in, invited to teach, but I, I accepted and therefore chose. Um, I, the reason why, I would say, is, uh, I mean, there's a number, and it's actually a rather long, autobiographical and complex, but the thing that I think could be valuable for you would be that, uh, uh, at the time, and that's 15 years ago, Colombia was probably one of two uh, places in, in the planet uh, where basically uh, were a school that, uh, that was organized uh, as a, that organized teaching in such a way that it would invite young teachers or at least teachers at an age where you could still question that you were aging, um, <laughs> that um, were debated, uh, that um, invite you to basically um, teach so that you would use teaching as a way of, uh, let's say, testing a number of questions, raising issues for your work, and then take it somewhere else in the form of writing, practice, teaching as well, or different vehicles. In other words, you would use, you would be invited to use teaching as a way of understanding how you were situated in an architectural debate. And I think that was uh, extraordinarily valuable, and, uh, and it's probably one of the uh, things that makes it uh, unique, and there are not too many places where that actually happens. New York was, of course, another uh, reason, <laughs> but of course, uh, but it's, uh, it goes hand in hand, because uh, those institutions, the other one at the time being in London, was basically institutions that... Uh, that uh, also unnamed, you notice. <laughs> yeah, oh, right, exactly. I'm uh, supposedly here to advertise one school, not two. Um, <laughs> um, Juan, do you want to say...? Uh, yeah, for the pleasure of answering this question, no? I'm perhaps the elder in this row, so I'm not in the case. <laughs> um, but after teaching in, I don't know, 13 or 14 schools of architecture around the world, <laughs> I can say that I, I love this place exactly because what's happening now here. So nobody's leaving this room, and you are like sending words, not like future, and you have 10 reactions, no? Uh, political. Uh, no. So this idea that the school is like a multiplication of conversations that is not taking anything for granted and, and confronting permanently the even the most accepted topics of architecture uh, is what has uh, made possible that now the, the way that in this school is considered the history or is considered the graphic resources or the uh, relation between theory and practice or the relation between the text sequence and the most uh, theoretical uh, um, part of the, of the discussion is uh, really something very, very important and, and, and you, the students, are the part of this. So 
uh, with there are many many situations transfer dialogue in in our case, but many others in in other in other departments and and, and, and in other fields of the school where everything is permanently uh, under this uh, conversation and and I think that the the way uh, the the topics of the architectural practice and the architectural theory are being focused in this school are different just because we have taken this freedom of discuss the obvious no and and we invite you of course to be part of this conversation so I'm, I'm just one more one more thought yes. Sorry. Yes, yes, please. I'm more or less um, born and raised in this neighborhood, <laughs> quite literally. Um, and um, the thought of not being here is like the thought of disappearing. But New York, um, more globally speaking, for, as an urban design person, um, New York is, is a driver of urbanization, part of the urbanization process that is n not about New York. So being here, though, is a kind of, uh, uh, at Columbia, Columbia is part of New York. It's, it's part of the urbanization process. It's as if you are here, but also dissociated globally. And so um, it's truly exciting because, just make sure they don't lock you in the studio because um, you will miss what makes Columbia so great is, as others have hinted at, seeing the rest of the world at our doorstep, or better or worse for us. So I invite you to um, join the lecture tonight, Andres Haki, who I think uh, will be incredibly exciting and actually demonstrate through the work uh, some of what we've been uh, talking about. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>